Good morning and welcome to Bay Area Focus. I'm your host, Michelle Griego. We would love to hear some show ideas, so just visit us at facebook.com slash Bay Area Focus and comment to the page. Well, we have a wonderful show for you today. We will hear from an agency protecting a Bay Area National Park and guests from two innovative organizations making a world of change. But up first, we have Susanna Zarysky, author of One-Eyed Princess. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much for having me here. So tell me about One-Eyed Princess. This is your story. Yes, so I was born cross-eyed. I was born in the former Soviet Union, and uh, I was put in actually a preschool for the developmentally disabled, which I wasn't, but because my eyes were both crossed, that's what happened. And when I came to the U.S. at the age of three, I got my first operation, and I was left with a lazy eye, and then I had my second operation when I was 17. But what I didn't learn from any of the doctors I went to mm -hmm. is that I didn't see in 3D. And what happens is, is that for the 2 to 5% of the population of people who have misaligned eyes, our brain doesn't t fuse the image from both of our eyes. And so therefore we don't see in 3D. Okay, and you brought some things with you to, to further explain for us who, who have not experienced that. Yeah. Um, you have something with two pens, yes. an exercise, yes. that will give us an idea of what you go through. Exactly. So right now I do have more depth perception because I've been doing some vision training for over six years. What happens is if, if you try to use both your eyes mm -hmm. and you're trying to put one pen on top of the other, it's a bit easier. If you close one eye, it's very easy to miss. Okay. It's hard to see such detail and such distance. So for those of us who don't have depth perception, it's very difficult to drive, very difficult to park. For me, it's even hard walking down the stairs sometimes because I don't see the distance from one stair to the other. Mm -hmm. How common is this? So. Some statistics show that it's two, some people say 5% of the population has it, so I would say 3% is an average. There's some people who have a very slight eye turn and they are able to see in some depth. But for those of us who are born with much wider eye turns, most of us can't see in depth. And you talked about vision training. What is some of that training? So I learned over six years, no, actually 10 years ago from a New Yorker article by Dr. Oliver Sacks that there's something called vision therapy for those of us who want to improve our vision. So one of the very common exercises is called the Brock string. So you know you're using both eyes, so if you concentrate on the yellow uh, bead in the middle, and you see the red and the green go double, that means you're using both eyes. Okay. So when I would do these exercises at home, I would very quickly get headaches. Sometimes I had to wear prism glasses. This only has a prism in one. And I'd walk around the house and do exercises looking like this. And my doctor, <laughs> I was going to say cute. <laughs> very cute. Very my doctor cute. said some people wear this to work. I didn't have the guts to wear no. it to work. Yes. Yeah, but, it, but it's been helping then the last six years? Yes. So I have developed more visual acuity. I can see um, small details better. I can see some depth better. For example, when I'm walking towards a tree or towards a plant or, or flowers, it looks like the tree and the plant and flowers are coming towards me, whereas before they just stood there as I moved by. And that's called motion parallax. Okay. So mo for most of us, when we're in motion and we're doing vision therapy, we can see more depth. How can having this impact a child? This is a really good question because I wish I had known as a kid because I knew my, there was something wrong with my eyes, but I didn't know I couldn't see in depth. Some children who don't see in depth have trouble reading because both eyes aren't working together, so sometimes they'll see in double, and I've, I've seen in double before and it's terrible. I would mm -hmm. see you with like two eyes and three, you know, sorry, three eyes and two noses and two mouths, but when they're seeing double and they're trying to read in school, they, they sometimes have trouble reading, and so they're put in remedial classes rather than getting training to improve their vision. Okay, so this is what double vision looks like. Exactly, so you have me on the left looking normal, and then you have me on the right looking in double. And imagine what it's like to go through life when this is what you see. Right. But a child who doesn't know that life could be seen a different way may not realize that it's not normal to be seeing in double when they're reading. Yeah. And it's very difficult for us to do sports because anything where sure. you have to catch a ball, kick a ball, throw a ball, and you have to know where it is in space, you're likely to miss. And it would be hard to read. So it could affect your grades. It could affect uh, your confidence. Exactly, and unfortunately in most schools across the country, in the school vision tests that we get, the school vision tests don't ch check for binocular vision. So I had fantastic vision, I had 20-15 vision in both eyes, you know, and I would do all the vision tests, but the vision test didn't tell me that I wasn't using both eyes correctly. So, so it's very important for parents to know. 
Okay, that is, that is good to know. Thank you so much for coming on the show and sharing your story with us. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you. And for more information about Susanna and her book, One-Eyed Princess, just log on to createyourworldbooks.com. Again, that's createyourworldbooks.com. Coming up, a look at preserving a local national park. We'll be right back.